to release a Joker, we've now got the last comic book blockbuster of 2019. And because of that, I wanted to stop and rank them all from worst to best. But before I get started ranking them all, consider clicking that subscribe button to see a lot more videos like this. we got rankings and reviews. And even I talk about The Walking Dead a lot. As you can see, I enjoy The Walking Dead. So with all that said, let's actually get started giving this ranking. So let's go. So coming in at number 7, I have, I thought, probably the most obvious choice out of the entire list. I've got X-Men, Dark Phoenix. Now, the biggest surprise to me about this movie was the fact that it actually came out because once Disney bought them, I think back in March, as far as I know, they bought them. And I thought, okay, maybe the first thing they're going to do is cancel this movie. Now, they still haven't cancelled New Mutants, but I thought for sure they would have cancelled Dark Phoenix because it was meant to come back, come out in November of 2018, got postponed to February, and then got postponed to June. So I thought, okay, this movie does not sound good. I'm sure they're going to cancel it, and they didn't. And I actually... There was elements of this movie that I did enjoy, but I think majority of it I didn't like. Like, I thought a lot of it, you could tell a lot of it has been reshot and moved around a lot. And you can tell Jennifer Lawrence, for the life of her, life of her, did not want to be there. Mystique looked nothing like she did. It was just a blue skin with a few dots in her head. She looked absolutely terrible. You could tell she did not want to be there at all. You could tell, like, Professor X, he does an amazing performance, James McAvoy. But they just, they kind of butcher his character. <laughs> the same with Jean Grey. They just butcher the character completely. Like this is their second attempt at doing Dark Phoenix, and they do a horrible job. And Quicksilver, they learned their lesson from Days of Future Past. Like, okay, people like this character. We should give him more. So they give him a lot more to do in X Men Apocalypse. But they're like, you know what? Let's just let's completely botch him. So they kind of they they write him out. I think probably probably at the very start of the second act, they write Quicksilver out completely, and he's just gone. There's no explanation of why he's not there. I think he gets hurt in the leg, but he's just gone for the entire movie, even though stuff is still happening. He never gets mentioned again, so I thought I, so I just I didn't understand it. So like a lot of it had a lot of problems, but it did have a lot of redeeming qualities. Like I did kind of enjoy seeing some of the X Men together. There was elements I enjoyed. I have it came out on Blu Ray last week, and I've been tempted to buy it buy it just so I could watch it again because I'm very interested to see if I like it more or less on the rewatch. As well, my girlfriend never seen it. I want her to watch it just to see if she likes it enough. And it's the only X-Men movie I don't have. I kind of have to complete my collection if I want to sleep well at night. And then coming up next on my list, I've got Hellboy. Now, going into Hellboy, I didn't know what to really expect. I didn't really watch many of the trailers. But David Harbour, I think he's an amazing actor from Stranger Things. So I wanted to see more of him. Hellboy as well is also my very first comic book I read. So I've always had a special place in my heart for Hellboy. And the other two movies I actually really enjoyed. So I thought, okay, it's a fresh new take. It's a complete reboot. So I don't know. I like the look of David Harbour as Hellboy. So I'm like, okay, I'll go and see how I got on. But I left this movie very underwhelmed and just very tired. I don't know why, but this movie just exhausted me so much. Like, they threw a lot on the screen. A lot happened. There was good elements, like the whole monster chasing when all the people in England were kind of trying to get Hellboy. I thought that was probably the best part of the whole movie. But a lot of it, uh, a lot of the recasting, like Hellboy's father, was nowhere. I don't know, I can't remember who plays him. But he's nowhere near John Hurt. So just a lot of this elements just didn't really stack up against the original movies. So that kind of held down a lot, but this is the same as X-Men Dark Phoenix for me. It came out in Blu-ray recently. I'm very tempted to buy this. I'm more tempted to buy Hellboy than I am to buy X-Men Dark Phoenix to watch it again, just to see if I like it more. I can't imagine if I actually just got to sit down and just watch this movie. Because I know in cinema, but it was a late movie as well, which is one of the reasons why I think I was tired. But I think if I actually sat down in the middle of the day and watched this, I think I would enjoy it a lot more than I did the first time. And then coming in number five, I thought it was probably one of the most easiest as well as X-Men. I thought Captain Marvel just kind of suited number five now i thought this movie first time watch it i enjoyed it but every single time i watch it i tend to actually enjoy this movie a lot more a lot of people don't like brie larson in the role of captain marvel i actually really enjoy her in the role i think she does it really well and the dynamic that her and nick fury have in this movie i thought is probably one of the best elements of this movie and it's just extremely enjoyable to watch i want to see it more like i want to see more of this in the future but i want to see nick fury now more with captain marvel now to see what everything she's been through everything he's been through just see how they play off each other and the aging of Nick Fury in this movie. How can you not talk about it? It is phenomenal. It looks absolutely stunning. It looks like it is Nick Fury but in Pulp Fiction. It was incredible what they were able to do. As well we've got characters like Talos who is probably one of the best new characters of this movie. If not I think he actually is the best character in this movie. And I can't wait to see more of him. And we got that little snippet of him in Spider-Man Far From Home. And I can't wait to see more of this character because I just really enjoyed him. I'm glad he actually survived as well. I can't remember the actor's name, but he also plays Dumbledore in the Fantastic Beast movies. He was a great character in this movie, and I, I think, remember, yeah, he's alive at the end of this, at the end of Captain Marvel. He's alive, so we will see more of him. I'm kind of glad we get to see more of him because what we got of him in Captain Marvel, I did really enjoy. The only reason it's not above this movie, uh, like higher up my list, I just think the other movies in the 
the rest is just a lot more rewatchable, a lot more original. This movie does feel a lot like a Phase One movie, the Marvel movies, Marvel Cinematic Universe. It doesn't really feel like it's moving along with all like where they're all our Avengers, even the Spider Man movies. They feel a lot more fresh. Where Captain Marvel does kind of feel a little bit stale and it feels like it's just a rinse and repeat. Same kind of idea. The first, probably the first half of Doctor Strange is very similar to an MCU Phase One movie, but then the second half does feel a lot more like a lot more new like Captain Marvel does feel a lot like a phase one movie that's why I had to kind of put it in at number five and then coming in at number four is our Captain Marvel or Shazam I really 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 enjoyed Shazam it's now my favorite DCEU movie it was between this and Aquaman but after re-watching this movie I have to go for Shazam I absolutely love this movie movie from start to finish it's just a blast it's so funny I love the dynamic that Freddie and Billy have you actually feel like they're best friends well, not best friends, but you feel like they are friends and they're just, you believe their relationship and it's just, it's a pleasure to watch. My only problem with the movie is Shazam and Billy, as some parts of the movie feel like two separate people when they should feel like one and the same. So I think some of those elements did drag it down. The villain in this movie, I really enjoyed. I didn't think, but looking at the trailer, I'm like, he looks like a pretty boring generic villain, but he actually was a very, he wasn't, it wasn't a new kind of villain, but just what he brought to the table, I did really enjoy and as well. I think the actor's name is Cooper Andrews, but he plays Jerry in The Walking Dead. And just getting to see any more of Jerry is just the best thing. And then coming in at number three, I do have Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, I kind of went back and forth on which were like more Spider-Man or Shazam. But in the end, I think I went for Spider-Man just because I've loved Spider-Man pretty much my entire life. I thought this is now my favourite Spider-Man movie. So I thought that my favourite Spider-Man movie does outweigh my favourite DCEU movie. But I just love everything. Tom Holland, absolutely phenomenal in this Jake Gyllenhaal, where I first got introduced to this man in Nightcrawler, and he's just a phenomenal role. So to see him go from Nightcrawler, I think I've only actually seen him in the two movies. So to so see him go from Nightcrawler, where he's a creepy ass dude, to going into Spider Man, like I could still, all I could really see was Louis Bloom, so it was a bit weird, but I just really enjoyed his performance as well. Getting to see J.K. Simmons come back and play J. John Jameson, I absolutely freaked out in the cinema my girlfriend looked at me like what the hell is <laughs> because she hadn't seen the original movies but to see the pl uh, just the delight of seeing him on screen i thought all the action sequences especially the one in the middle when he's during that kind of abandoned warehouse absolutely phenomenal i just i absolutely love spider-man far from home i can't wait for it to come out in blu-ray so i can rewatch it because i imagine this is probably going to be a one that i put on a lot i don't know if i'll watch it more than homecoming but i just i absolutely love this movie and as well Peter Parker does not know what ACDC was, that kind of, I laughed at that, but I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and my runner-up, second place, had to go to Joker. Now, I think a lot of people would probably have this as their number one, but, but I'll talk about why number one became number one, but number two for Joker, I thought was just, Joker was a phenomenal movie. I went into it with pretty low expectations, because seeing them doing, oh, it's a Joker movie. Um, I seen Martin Scorsese was attached, I'm like, ah, oh, but still, Todd Phillips was directing, like, the guy from The Hangovers. But then I was watching it, I'm like, this is good. And it's just kind of getting better and better and better. I'm like, oh my god, this movie's amazing. Walking in Phoenix was an incredible performance. The way it's directed, it's just beautiful. The whole movie, I just thought was amazing. The script and everything. Just everything about this movie. The characters, like, there's, I don't know if the, a lot of these characters are new. I watched, like, like the Waynes, I thought, I, I, I thought Bruce, not th Thomas Wayne, was an asshole. Even Alfred was an asshole. Bruce Wayne was the only one in this movie who actually showed the Joker, surprisingly any bit of kindness and he, I, I thought that was mad and then he works in this place called I think it was called Ha Ha it was like a clown rental place and everyone in there was an asshole to him so to see everyone beat this man down I thought was phenomenal and then the last scenes when he's on the talk show with um, Robert De Niro absolutely loved it as soon as that talk show as soon as he actually got the call to go on that talk show I'm like jeez I, I, I like this movie I know where it's going really enjoyed it really really enjoyed Joker I can't say it enough I was got. I was debating where or not this is number one, number two. I thought inevitable. It was inevitable. I had to put number one where number one is, and I thought Joker was just. I couldn't put it higher than number one, or higher than number two. So I just had to put Joker at number two. And as you can probably guess, Avengers Endgame came in first place. When I was putting this together, I was debating this or Joker, but I was thinking no, Avengers Endgame has to take this. I just thought this this movie blew my mind i was so so excited from it like i came back the day this came out i came back from a holiday right so my flight was really early that morning it was like five o'clock that morning coming back and i was in work the next day because i had that day off work I'm like, okay but then i found out i can go see a 12 o'clock showing so i went home and i couldn't sleep from the excitement of seeing this movie that night so then i slept i thought i didn't sleep sorry 
and then I went to go see that movie at 12 o'clock and as we were, I think it was about half 10, 11, me and my girlfriend like, why the hell did we choose to go see a 12 o'clock screening? Because we were both wrecked. But then it got to the stage where I didn't see the premiere and a burst of energy got onto me and I was so excited and I just was not tired at all throughout that movie and it ended. And then I was like, okay, because I, I started work at 7, like, well, I just got straight to work while I got home. So I went home, got to sleep and I was just so excited. Like that day in work, I was trying to get tickets to go see Endgame again because I wanted to see it with a crowd first. Like there's so many iconic moments this, that just in case you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it here. But there's so many moments that I wanted to see it again with a live crowd. Now, I didn't actually get to see it. I think that came out the Wednesday. I got to see it the Friday again. And just to see all those moments, because I took my brother to see it. And to see the excitement in his face. Because I was watching his face for a lot of these moments. Because I wanted to see him. And just he had the biggest grin on his face throughout this movie. And it was just... I absolutely loved it. I think I've seen it five or six times in the cinema. And I've seen it twice since owning it. And it is phenomenal. Like, the first two acts... Like, the f after the... F <laughs> After the fifth or sixth time, the first two acts kind of slow down a bit. But once you get to that final act, it is incredible. I don't think we'll ever get a third act as big and as epic and as incredible as this third act was. I just loved it. It was amazing. All the iconic moments, seeing every Avenger, like from every single movie, every corner of the MCU coming together to fight against Thanos. It was absolutely mind-blowing. I love this movie. It is, I no, it's not my favourite of the year. There's one movie ahead of it. But this movie is my favorite comic book movie of the year. It's not my favorite MCU movie, but it's definitely up there. I think it's I think it's number two or three. I can't really remember. This movie is a phenomenal movie. If you haven't seen it, I don't know why. But if you have, <laughs> it's not one I can recommend you just watching Endgame. If you want to watch Endgame, you've got to watch all the twenty two movies leading up to this movie because it is a phenomenal movie. It's a phenomenal bookend. Far from Home continued on perfectly. Far from Home was a a brilliant continuation on and I can't wait to see what they do next because this is an ending some people aren't happy with their continuing on I see this as an ending for Tony and Steve because I m imagine Natasha Black Widow will come back so I just seen that as an ending for those two characters because a lot everyone else's stories are going to keep going like we're, we're going to see more of the Guardians we're going to see Black Panther more Doctor Strange so just because Tony and Steve's uh, stories is over it doesn't mean everyone else's stories i can't wait to see what the mcu does next but this is probably their highest point they're ever going to get and i was glad i got to be there opening night and i just a part of me wishes i can go back to the opening night and watch this movie like for the very first time again that was my biggest takeaway from infinity war was on that i'm like i'm pretty sad i'll never be able to watch this movie for the first time again but this movie avengers endgame i am more sad i will never see this movie for the first time again so that is my ranking of all the comic book movies of 2019. Let me know what your ranking is down below. Even just let me know what your favourite movie is down below. This comic book movie of this year. Because we've had some amazing comic book movies. We've also had a few duds. But we still, they are kind of, they're okay as I said in this ranking. But anyways, let me know what your ranking is down below. Click subscribe so you can see other rankings and movie reviews just like this one. And as always, thanks for watching.